Sports Squad back with another video. I see that title was going down. Make sure you hit that like button, that subscribe button. I'm telling y'all, y'all see what is going down. Also, if y'all see, did grab a new mic. I grabbed a new mic because people was in the comments saying y'all couldn't hear me that well. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna grab a mic. I'm gonna grab a mic and I'm gonna grab the little the little kickstand with it. You know what I'm saying so I got the kickstand. Um, but you already know. Make sure you hit the like button, that subscribe button. Definitely appreciate everybody tuning in, watching these reactions, watching these videos. Let's get a video, y'all. Phil Holloway, former assistant district attorney, joining us now. Phil, what has struck you so far during this hearing? Well, great to be with you, Sandra. As always, you know, considering the, the multitude of business entities that are connected to the Biden family, I forget the total number, but it's a lot, and the millions and millions and millions of dollars that are flowing into those businesses. Meanwhile, those businesses have no cognizable product that they can sell, no service that they can sell, nothing that you can attach all of this inbound revenue to. Given that fact, the only reasonable explanation that's left logically is is influence peddling and Joe Biden is the person with influence he has been for decades the person with influence so uh, the hunter team is doing their best to to try to keep the dots from being connected to Joe Biden but there's really nowhere else the dots could logically lead except to Joe Biden because he is the brand. Joe Biden is the brand. He's the only thing that they can sell uh, in terms of, of influence. And so this is where the committee is going. This is where the investigators are going. But the real effort is going to be to connect the dots because Hunter that we've seen so far has done a very good job. At least uh, he's, he's made great efforts to try to prevent them from connecting the dots. It's just like not showing up today after he demanded uh, the ability to come in person to testify. He basically says, no, there's no point in it now. You guys already had the opportunity to talk to me. It's obfuscation and it's an effort to keep investigators from connecting this to Joe, but that's where it's headed. Joe has to be logically the, the brand that they are selling uh, that we can attribute all that revenue to. Really interesting. Uh, from, from what you're seeing, uh, you say that this is a well-orchestrated campaign to keep the investigators from connecting uh, Hunter's business dealings to Joe. Uh, before I move on, do you see any of that changing with this hearing today, Phil? Hmm. Oh, absolutely not. They're going to stay the course. You know, you've got I was going to say something. I'm going to Just a few months left before the election. And so the game, if you will, is for them to sort of run out the clock to keep them from yeah. connecting this to Joe before the election. They're going to keep doing more of the same. Hunter Biden's not going to cooperate. You're going to see some uh, degrees of cooperation from former business partners like Bubba Linsky, for example, people that, you know, have been besmirched by, by Hunter and his team, uh, and they're tired of it. They're going to come forward mm. and tell the truth but to the extent that he can hunter's not going to cooperate one bit all right so we'll keep watching that meanwhile five days that's how long former president donald trump has to fork over nearly half a billion dollars phil or risk losing his portfolio of assets his lawyers this week that's said crazy. getting that much cash is quote a practical impossibility critics say new york attorney general letitia james campaign promises of getting trump shows this whole thing is personal and political. The former president agrees. I built a great company, uh, one of the greatest companies anywhere in the country, especially when it comes to real estate, have some of the greatest assets in the world. And this is a rigged trial. This was a rigged trial by a crooked judge and a crooked attorney general. Billions of dollars in value, billions of dollars in properties, but they'd like to take the cash away so I can't use it on the campaign. And this is just a corrupt group of people. It's election interference. In the days after the wow. February decision, Phil, James made her intentions clear. Listen here. We are prepared to make sure that the judgment is paid to New Yorkers. And yes, I look at 40 Wall Street each and every day. Uh huh. So 40 Wall Street is one of Trump's most iconic New York City properties. And A.G. James. But my thing is, is why take, why take and mess up everything? Like, I feel like with all of these, like, buildings, with stuff you know the apartment stuff everything if it's bringing first of all i'm gonna say if it's bringing obviously uh people to this you know his business and stuff and they you know you definitely don't they don't want to see trump win uh new york is i'm telling y'all i've been i've been covering on some stuff with new york too and 
I've been talking to my friend. Make sure y'all uh, go subscribe to Regular Job. I've been talking with him about New York and Texas. And the stuff that is going on, even with Chicago, it's bad. You know, it's, it's bad. You know, when I see New York, I think that's the first thing that I think of. You know, obviously, I think you know what's going on with Letitia James and Trump. But I also think, y'all, like, New York is bad. The migrants is bad, y'all. Could also take measure to seize assets outside of New York. So what are the former president's choices if he doesn't make bond by Monday? He can ask the state appeals court to pause the judgment, find a benefactor, or declare bankruptcy. What do you see happening, Phil? Well, I remember sometime during, I think it was the first week of law school, we learned that when somebody loses a trial, they've got an absolute right to a direct appeal. What the judge has done, and I think it's preposterous, and, and quite frankly, it's it's... I don't care what you think about Donald Trump, you ought to recognize this as being wrong. It's, it's a weaponization of the justice system against a specific individual they're targeting. But he has a right, guys, to, to a, file an appeal. And the judge has built this in, in a way that he does not have the ability to, to exercise that right. So this is preventing him from his appeal that he has as a matter of right. Uh, this is the kind of thing that, that happens when you see prosecutors weaponizing the justice system. This is not unlike what's happening in Atlanta where you've got prosecutors essentially campaigning uh, on the platform that they're going to go after and get a specific citizen. Uh, so regardless of how you feel about Trump, you've got to recognize that this is wrong. This is akin to telling a condemned prisoner, yes, you can have your appeal, but only after we carry out the execution, of course, and then it's too late. But that's what's going on in New York. I mean, mm -hmm. in, in the next five days, I mean, James could start seizing these, these Trump assets, as we mentioned, beyond New York. I mean, what would that eventually look like if she moves in that direction? As all indications say that she just may. Yeah, what, what would happen is if she liquidates everything, that's carrying out the, the death penalty, if you will, in terms of his business yeah. without him having the right to appeal. It's wrong. It's not how the system is supposed to work. Um, and it's a perfect example of the weaponization, the wrongful weaponization of the justice system uh, yeah. designed to go after one specific individual. Uh, well, more on the justice system. It's We've crazy. got an update now, Phil, from the judge. This justice in overseeing efforts to disqualify Fonnie Willis from the Georgia election interference case. That judge, uh, we have just learned, has issued an order, Phil, allowing Trump and eight co-defendants to seek appeal of the order denying disqualification of Willis. The Georgia mm. Court of Appeals has 45 days to decide whether they will hear the case. That's obviously big news, Phil. Your reaction. That is, that is, that is actually like real big news on that. That's that's real big news. And I feel like I know we all feel some type of way of the judge's decision um, of what happened with that whole thing, because we know that, you know, uh, Fanny, what Fanny Stan and Nathan Wade supposedly, you know, him, him, uh, you know, resigning or whatever. Um, I, I feel like that that all is is tough. And, and honestly, um I don't know if I get in trouble for saying this or not. Um, I try not to, but, um, you know, what if it wasn't him that, you know, made that decision, you know, with, you know, resign? I don't know. You know, I don't, obviously people are going, you know, say that it is, but um, just the way that things are and how messed up things are right now with this whole case, what's going on with Fanny, with what happened with, you know, it, it doesn't, a lot of the stuff doesn't seem right. The stuff that comes out, you know what I mean? Yeah, it is big, and it's something that we've been following, of course, very closely here in the Atlanta area. The judge's order that's being appealed, in my opinion, uh, is wrong. I think that th he found, for example, that Willis uh, wrongfully engaged in uh, communications outside the courtroom. Basically, she went into the well of a church on Sunday, and she essentially called uh, some of the defendants and their counsels racist, right? And so she mm -hmm. is making public statements outside of the courtroom that are designed to to uh, 
impact the, the ability of these defendants to get a fair trial. So what's happened, uh, the parties have appealed and they have to do a, it's a two-step thing. They've got to get the judge who issued the order to agree to it. And as you mentioned, the Court of Appeals also has to agree to hear it. This is what we call an interlocutory appeal, a pre-trial appeal. Normally you have to wait until after there's a conviction and then take every issue up that you think is an error, take it all up on appeal at the same time. But this issue is so important that it, you know, you don't want to risk having a trial or multiple trials against all these defendants, potentially having convictions, and then have the Court of Appeals, after all is said and done, have them then say, uh, you got it wrong. We're going to send it back for you to start over all wow. again, and this time with a brand new prosecutor. So this procedure will prevent that type of situation from occurring. Really interesting. That just in. Phil, thank you for coming on and responding to all of that. A lot to keep track of. Always happy to be here. Hey, everyone. That's crazy, though. Just a just a simple fact of how how things work, you know, and I, I can't even say how things work because the, how it worked was really is something surprise. It's something that I've never seen before. Um, I don't know if you have. But it's something I haven't seen before. Um, I just started, you know, uh, y'all know, reacting to these videos, looking at these videos, you know, of last year. So, uh, and then getting, you know, not, I wouldn't say so much serious, but just being aware of knowing, you know, what's going on. Um, and this is obviously something that a lot of people need to pay attention to um, on, a, on a daily basis of what's going on, you know, because this is something that, will affect, you know, um, <clears throat> your family, you know, what's going on with your family and your daily lives. Um, so it's important to see what's going on, see what's done, you know, because it is some people that is, you know, obviously, sadly, you know, corrupt, you know, and it's sad. But uh, y'all let me know y'all thoughts on this video. Hopefully the sound sounds amazing and everything is all right and okay with it. Definitely appreciate y'all. Much love, everybody. Catch y'all on the next one.